All right, self-isolating sixth graders, let's knock out chapter three, lesson five, which is going to be about metamorphic rocks. So uh, metamorphic rock, uh, the definition you need to work with uh, goes with uh, three parts to the definition and each part uh, has three subparts. So metamorphic rock forms when heat, pressure, or fluid is going to act on igneous, sedimentary, or other metamorphic rock and that's going to change its form, composition, or both. So the three parts of three. The first part of three is this, heat, pressure, fluid. Uh, you need heat, you need pressure, and fluid really, really helps things, but it's not completely necessary. But heat and pressure are. Um, metamorphic rock can come from igneous, sedimentary, or even other metamorphic rock. So igneous can become metamorphic, sedimentary rock can become metamorphic, and metamorphic rock can actually change what kind of metamorphic rock that it is. Now, it becomes metamorphic rock by changing its form, what it looks like, its composition, what it's made out of, or most often, both things change. So the Earth's surface is broken up into plates, and these plates are kind of sliding around very, very slowly. They're called tectonic plates. We live on the North American plate. Now, the reason why California has so many earthquakes is because the Pacific plate right here that runs right through California, uh, the North American plate and the Pacific plate are kind of going in opposite directions, and um, every now and again when they slip, you get earthquakes. Um, this fault line right here, uh, the North American plate and the Eurasian plate are actually separating. They're going in opposite directions. And so that's making the uh, Atlantic Ocean wider. Meanwhile, the Pacific pl uh, plate is uh, kind of closing in on us uh, right there. So um, you'll see diagrams that look like this where you can actually see the arrows of movement. So here is the mid-Atlantic Ridge. You can see that these plates are going in opposite directions and that's causing um, them to uh, create the, a wider uh, Atlantic Ocean every year. Where you see plates converge, um, like, where are they converging? <laughs> They're all separating. Um, all right, so this plate is going this way, the Philippine plate, and these plates are going that way. So there's a big collision going on right here. And that's what causes all these volcanoes um, here. All right. Oh, and as you can see, uh, here's the California, the San Andreas Fault. These plates are going in opposite directions, and that's what's causing uh, those earthquakes. All right, so um, here we have one plate and another plate, and they are colliding. And um, a lot of times what happens is that one plate actually has a higher density than the other. And so the one with the higher density is going to actually sink under um, the other plate. Now, to give you an idea of how uh, much pressure this is going to create, this is five miles. So a plate uh, that's riding on the Earth's surface can actually be 30 to 60 miles thick. So now you have to, you know, think about a 30 to 60 mile thick slab of rock bending. Now, in order for a 30 to 60 mile thick piece of rock that's several thousand miles in length to bend, you're dealing with a tremendous amount of pressure. So when we talk about um, metamorphic rocks coming as a result of pressure, it's these what are called subduction zones, where one plate is diving down deep underneath another plate. So um, this plate here and this plate here are colliding, and this plate, because it's got a higher density, is sinking under the other one. Um, now, you also need heat for this to happen. And so we have these underground magma chambers nearby providing a lot of thermal energy. Now, big to big difference. Igneous rocks come from molten rock. So you need so much heat that the rock actually liquefies. Metamorphic rock, you need a lot of heat, but not enough to melt it. You need it soft because of it's, it's very, very hot, but it's still a solid. It will hold its own shape. So this can only become igneous rock. 
but it's providing a lot of thermal energy to this X mark right here. So we've got pressure from uh, being deep underground and this bending of rock, and we've got a good heat source nearby, making this nice and squishy and warm, but still a solid. And so right here where X marks the spot, this is where metamorphic rock will form. This is where other rock will change its form, composition, or both. Um, as this gets too far deep, it'll actually liquefy, and then it can only become igneous rock after that. All right, so of course we need to classify metamorphic rock, and there are two main groups. There are foliated and non-foliated. Foliated has stripes. So here we have an igneous rock, and this is kind of like what the mineral grains look like beforehand, scattered and uh, they're pointed every which way. And then a lot of stress, heat and pressure is going to squeeze the rock. And that's going to turn all of these mineral grains that are facing every which way to all kind of more or less uh, orient the same way. They're all going to be more or less parallel now. And that's going to cause the mineral grains to kind of have a stripey effect. Um, so you can see that this rock um, became this rock, but what it looks like, its form definitely changed. So this is an igneous rock, and then after heat and pressure, it became um, foliated metamorphic rock. So foliated metamorphic rock has these kind of parallel stripes going on. So um, non-foliated is just going to be the opposite of that. It's not going to have the parallel stripes. So here we have a rock called gneiss. Uh, the G is silent, so it's a nice rock. And uh, nice is clearly foliated. You can see kind of all the mineral grains are all kind of parallel to each other. Marble, on the other hand, is a non-foliated metamorphic rock. Uh, there's no um, uh, parallelism to the mineral grains. It is just kind of still scattered. Okay, so foliated, non-foliated. Foliated, stripey, non-foliated, not stripey. All right, all metamorphic rocks, because they come from a previously existing rock, they have what is called a parent rock. Uh, the rock that it came from, the previously existing rock, is called the parent rock. Um, so here we have a, a chart that'll show like the parent rock and um, what its texture is and then what the metamorphic rock it becomes. So shale is a sedimentary rock and it becomes slate and um, it will be a, um, because it has very fine layers of uh, parallel mineral grains, it will be a foliated. Um, slate, which is a metamorphic rock, okay, um, which came from shale, slate uh, can, under heat and pressure, become a different kind of metamorphic rock called phyllite. So shale, in the sense, is can be kind of like the grandparent rock of phyllite. Phyllite can become, under heat and pressure, a, a rock called schist, and schist can become another metamorphic rock called gneiss. So, um, yeah, here we have uh, sedimentary to metamorphic, and then three different metamorphics becoming new and different metamorphic rock. Limestone is a chemical sedimentary rock. And because it doesn't form parallel layers of mineral grains, it is a non-foliated metamorphic rock, and that's where we get marble. And then sandstone, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, is a clastic sedimentary rock, and that becomes a non-foliated uh, metamorphic rock called quartzite. So, uh, again, the parent rock is just what it comes from. So here we have granite and igneous rock oops, uh, becoming a foliated metamorphic rock called gneiss. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that gneiss also came from other possible parents. Uh, so we'll have to talk about that in just a minute. Here we have sandstone, a clastic sedimentary rock becoming quartzite, and shale, another clastic sedimentary rock, it becomes slate. All right, so some metamorphic rocks, if uh, as you have seen, like nice, have multiple possible parent rocks. There's several different parent rocks that can become nice. Um, some parent rocks, um, like I said, can become multiple types of metamorphic rocks. 
So one kind of parent rock can actually go in a couple of different directions. Most, however, only have one possible relationship, but uh, just be aware that they, um, there are possible multiple possible parents for some. So here we have shale. Shale is a uh, clastic sedimentary rock and under heat and pressure can become a rock called slate. And you'll see slate in, in a lot of uh, hardware stores um, or it's slates often used as roofing and things like that. Uh, slate is also used in people's like uh, landscaping. It's, gonna, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good rock. <laughs> so here we have shale is the parent rock for slate. Now slate um, under heat and pressure uh, is a metamorphic rock that turns into a new and different type of metamorphic rock called phyllite. So it's form or composition changed in some way to become a new and different metamorphic rock. Phyllite can become schist, but also basalt can become schist. So schist is an example of a rock that can have multiple possible parents. It can come from phyllite, which is a metamorphic rock, or it can also come from basalt, which is an igneous rock that happens to have low silicates and a lot of metals. Yep. Schist can become nice, but also granite can become nice. So nice is another example of something that can come from a metamorphic rock or an igneous rock. Most have only one possible relationship, um, but uh, well, uh, some can have multiple. So here we have just another visual of granite, uh, which is an igneous rock, high in silicates, low in metals. And here we have nice, as you can see, the mineral grains became way more uh, parallel uh, than they were in the granite form. Sometimes in nature, you can actually see the line of demarcation. So here we have granite and here we have uh, nice. So this part of the rock uh, became metamorphed uh, and then this stayed igneous rock. So I'm guessing that the fluids got to about here and then this, this was able to change and this was not. All right, so here we have sandstone, a clastic sedimentary rock. And on a large scale, there's actually huge sandstone deserts. So sandstone is a sedimentary rock uh, that formed in a very traditional way. Now, if all of this were taken down into a subduction zone and all of this rock was exposed to heat and pressure very deep underground, it would become a new type of rock, a metamorphic rock called quartzite. Um, limestone, same thing. Limestone is a chemical sedimentary rock that forms at the bottom of the ocean. And if limestone was subducted deep into the earth, exposed to a lot of heat and pressure, these mineral grains would change and grow and rearrange, but not become parallel. And so you get marble, a non-foliated metamorphic rock. So um, just here's another visual to show you that something like nice uh, can have multiple possible parents. It can come from an igneous rock. It can come from a sedimentary rock. It can come from metamorphic rocks. So nice um, has multiple possible parents. Um, other uh, examples tend to only kind of have one. All right, here's a big idea I need you to know. So a rock can only become a metamorphic rock deep underground because that's where the heat and pressure is. So if you are looking at a metamorphic rock like we were in several of the pictures, um, that means that it had to come up to the surface for us to get at it. Okay, Us digging a few feet underground is not going to get to the heat and pressure that we need. Metamorphic rocks happen uh, tens of miles underground and none of our mines go that deep. So that means that it, for it to come up to the surface, more movement had to happen. So most rocks, igneous uh, and uh, sedimentary, are created on the Earth's surface. And so to make a metamorphic rock, that material has to first travel from the surface to deep underground, get changed, and then make its way back to the surface. So long story short, metamorphic rocks have been on a very long journey. So again, uh, just to kind of bring back an image we were looking at before, here we have igneous rock forming, here we have sedimentary rock forming, like along this crust, and 
as uh, that rock gets taken down or subducted, then it can change. But here it is, and this is way too deep for us to dig. None of our minds go this deep. So that means that the Earth's crust has to kind of change directions, and a metamorphic rock will actually have to work its way back up to the surface somehow. Um, and so just, I, you know, appreciate the, the journey that a uh, metamorphic rock has been on in order for you to look at it. All right. So we're going to pause here because last week's was uh, fairly long. Make sure that you answer the five questions. And from my shop... <laughs>